What is going on guys? My name is Ben. How are you guys doing today? What I have for you today in this video uh, is actually giving you guys my thoughts about Apple's most recent event and actually after watching the event uh, is the iPad Pro, uh, the uh, Apple TV, uh, the iPhone 6S and the 6S Plus uh, uh, along with iOS 9 and uh, what I think about it, the Apple Watch. So let's first uh, start off with the Apple Watch because they did announce some new bands for it. So uh, basically giving you guys some uh, new styles, more choices that you can have. And uh, I mean, uh, as far as the Apple Watch is concerned to me, uh, I mean, uh, basically they are, they just gave uh, their customers more options uh, on the kind of Apple Watch that they want that fits their style, that fits their wrist. So for anybody that likes the Apple Watch, uh, definitely check out those choices and see if you're interested in them. As far as uh, how I feel about this, you know, at least they're giving their customers some more choices. But the Apple Watch, it, it's still uh, something that I personally wouldn't have on me. Uh, although, uh, what I find interesting was that uh, the Apple Watch can actually inspire uh, people. Because there was actually a quote uh, during the event and that was mentioned how this person um, actually lost 30 pounds uh, from actually uh, using the watch uh, which inspires a lot of people to uh, be fit and healthy uh, because yeah I mean when you're going outside to jog around uh, that device is small enough and you can actually have that on your wrist uh, listen to your music and whatnot and uh, so that's uh, pretty much what the Apple watch can do for the most part uh, of course, there's other things as well, but I feel like the, the, the Apple Watch is actually as inspiring a lot of people to stay healthy and keep fit because it, it contains all these features to uh, help you keep track uh, of, of what you're trying to do, how many calories you're burning, you know, it's got the health app, so uh, that's basically uh, like I think the biggest selling point for the Apple Watch it is fitness. and. Uh, it, it's cool to see that everybody is actually trying to stay healthy all because of one device. Now, granted, could we have done this on our own without uh, the smartwatch? Yeah, of course. W uh, will we be encouraged to do it? Probably not because, uh, I mean, uh, let's face it, technology is changing us every day and it changes our lifestyle, believe it or not. I mean, we can go back uh, to uh, all the past uh, where we didn't have this technology and we pretty much did everything without it and now that we've had all this technology and we try to do things without them it's like oh okay what's going on what happened I mean kids that are being born these days are growing up with uh, these uh, pieces of technology and that that's actually how they're learning so uh, that that's just my thoughts about the Apple watch and it, it's basically changing uh, a, a group of people out there. I'm actually surprised by that. And but like I said, I wouldn't have one personally. Uh, but uh, for those of you guys that really like the Apple Watch and uh, really think it's a neat product, uh, then that's great. And uh, I I hope that whatever else Apple uh, has to offer for the watch, that you guys will actually appreciate it and like it. Now let's talk about the iPad. They announced a new iPad apparently, the iPad Pro, and I think I discussed about this in a video, uh, like way back. I can't even remember when, uh, but uh, from what I rec uh, recalled, if I can recall it correctly, uh, I was like, why would they do this? Uh, because they had the iPad Air with a 9.7 inch screen, then they had the iPad Mini with a 7.9 inch screen. Now they have an iPad Pro with a. 12.9 inch screen. I mean, that's overkill right there. But, you know, actually, after watching the event, uh, uh, maybe they, or they're they able to get away with this. Uh, because, I mean, with that uh, extra screen in real estate, you can actually do a lot more and you can actually view videos in um, better quality. Plus, you know, in terms of the actual hardware itself, it has uh, a better uh, audio system in there. With four speakers on there, uh, it's going to produce better sound because, let's face it, I mean, with these devices right here, smartphones and tablets, the sound's not that great. 
uh, unless you have stereo speakers that are actually on the front uh, of your device, then yes. But, you know, I'm curious to see how the uh, audio quality will sound on the iPad Pro right here. And this is their most powerful iPad that Apple has ever made. And since the very first iPad. And it's going to utilize a lot of technology. One thing I wonder is desktop class performance. That's what they claim that this can give you. I'm curious to see that myself. And the iPad Pro, while it does resemble a lot of the iPad Air, it's actually a pretty neat product. Of course, it'll be running iOS 9 and it'll be coming out in November. And I was actually surprised by how people can actually take advantage of this product. And you can actually do video editing a lot better with the bigger screen real estate. Of course, you still have to use your finger to touch the screen versus using a mouse and a keyboard, but they actually have an extra accessory called the Apple Pencil, which is basically their version of a stylus. And let me tell you something. If Steve Jobs were, uh, was still around today, I don't think any of this would have happened. No way, because I remember uh, seeing the event when he announced the very first iPhone. Uh, uh, he mentioned that, well, add a stylus. No. <laughs> like, uh, he uh, would never even uh, think about a stylus being added to any of their products. He would never uh, uh, believe that uh, their Apple Incorporated will actually create a stylus. Guess what? Now they did. <laughs> but, you know, of course, Tim Cook is the CEO right now, so uh, he has his own different point of view. And then uh, basically just try to see, okay, what can Apple do? So, uh, I mean, I guess everyone just has their own uh, style of taste in terms of like how their products uh, will be made and how it's going to work. And will Apple be a success? Yeah, of course they will. Now, if they've been successful before, they're going to be even more successful. Oh, because uh, while I personally feel that iOS uh, is boring and is uh, just not very interesting anymore, it's still a great uh, piece of software. It's still a great product. And once in a while, I do go back to an iPhone you know, from time to time just to do something with it, play around with it, and then I'll, I'm back at my Android phone m most of the time because that's my daily driver. That's the phone that I'm actually on with at and service. So that's my go-to phone right there. And the, the iPad Pro, uh, well, what I get it myself personally, I probably not because, I mean, while the iPad Pro is a very great piece of hardware, I don't have a need for it right now because I'm totally fine with doing all the video editing done on my computer. And if I were to do video editing on the fly, it'll just be like a very simple clip that doesn't have to be all the professional, but just for fun. And more than likely, I'll probably do it on my phone or my iPhone. So, but the iPad Pro, I see it that it'll use more in the business environment. Why? I feel like that's what it fits it for. With the bigger screen real estate and for business travelers, it's actually a great product. Although, I could imagine like how heavy that thing is. I mean, that is a little bit thicker than the iPad Air 2 from what I've seen in the event. And, I mean, with the extra screen real estate, it's going to put more weight on it. They say that you can hold it with one hand just fine, but I don't know. I feel like after a while, your hand would just get tired from it. But, you know, it depends on your preference. They actually announced another iPad as well, the iPad Mini 4th Generation, or the iPad Mini 4. But it, they actually took the same specs of the iPad Air 2 and basically just put it in a smaller casing, in a smaller enclosure. So that's pretty much it. You're getting a smaller version of the iPad Air 2 with the iPad Mini 4. So, you got the iPad Mini, iPad Mini 4, uh, excuse me, the iPad Mini 2, and the iPad Mini 4, then you got the iPad Air, and the iPad Air 2, and then you got uh, the iPad Pro. And capacity-wise, it's actually only available in a 32GB and a 128GB Wi-Fi only model, and then if you want the Wi-Fi and cellular, your only option is 128GB. Why did they do that? I have no idea, but... Hey, you know, with the iPad Pro, if you're going to be doing heavy-duty stuff that 
normally you'd be doing on your computer, you're going to need the extra space, like video editing. You need a lot of room to store those videos, right? 128 gigabytes. And uh, I thought that's actually very cool that, that Apple made the capacity you know, that high with the iPad Pro. And I feel like it's definitely worth it <laughs> for the tablet it is. Now let's talk about the Apple TV. So the Apple TV, uh, when the second generation came out, I was actually surprised by it at the time. Although, yeah, I was younger at the time and I probably got manipulated very easily. And, and the Apple TV, I started to feel like, yeah, it's great, but uh, I mean, what am I going to do with it? I mean, that's why I don't have one right here, uh, other than the fact that I couldn't afford it at the time. Uh, although, they made it very affordable right now, it's still selling it, w along with the new one with, for 69 bucks. And now you got the new Apple TV, you can get it in 32 gigabytes or 64 gigabytes. And after seeing the event, they've actually improved a lot with the Apple TV. They put a new operating system on it that's based off of iOS, but they're calling it tvOS. Now developers can actually develop apps for the Apple TV. So yes, they integrated an app store and they're and providing all the developer kits, all the tool kits uh, for these people to create apps for. And then hopefully uh, they'll create low cost apps like they've always done for uh, iOS and Mac OS X and as well as you know, the free apps. And of course they redesigned uh, a lot of their apps as well uh, on the home screen. And what's very interesting to me is that they demonstrated the Apple TV as it being a gaming console. Well, I wouldn't say a full dedicated gaming console, but like a gaming console. For instance, there was this one company that was demonstrating the game on the new Apple TV, Crossroads or Crossy Road. I actually downloaded it on my phone after seeing the game, and I'm like, oh, that looks fun to play. Why don't I download it? And I did. And now, exclusively for the Apple TV, you can do multiplayer on that. And the way you do multiplayer is using and Apple's new remote uh, that they made for that particular device with the touchpad, with the glass uh, front uh, on the remote itself and I guess that the way it works is that you're using two of those remotes or you can use your iPhone or iPad or iPod Touch as the controller and these devices connect through Bluetooth so you don't even have to point the remote directly at the Apple TV itself. It's not like with a DVD player or a cable box or a VCR where you have the IR blaster built into the remote and then the sensor on the actual device itself where you have to point it directly at each other so that way they'll communicate and recognize the connection that's being made between the two devices right there. So that's actually pretty neat uh, although it, is it likely to fail? Eh, Bluetooth connections can fail at certain times. I mean, maybe the, the, the device is just having a bad time when I'm trying to connect, so therefore making the Bluetooth useless. I mean, I, I've seen it happen with my Galaxy Note 4 before when I try to connect it to the Bluetooth in the car, but it happens once in a while, but not all the time. And what's very interesting was like the remote, I'm thinking, okay, if the batteries are dead, you have to replace the batteries. No, they. Apple has integrated a lightning connector, a lightning connector from iOS devices, and they say it can hold uh, a charge up to three months with typical use. And once your battery's dead, you just plug in a lightning cable to charge it. I'm like, um, okay, that's just kind of weird, but I guess cool at the same time. But. I hope that the battery was replaceable if it does ever go bad, which I'm assuming it's not gonna because, I mean, Apple hasn't made a product with removable batteries other than the keyboards and the mouse that they make. And, and I don't know if there's anything else, but in terms of like the main products like the iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch, those batteries are not removable. Once those batteries are done, you either get it replaced by Apple or you get it replaced yourself or you recycle it at the Apple store. And, with 10% off on a new product. I mean, uh, that's just how it is. And I'm hoping the battery could be replaceable on the remote, but don't quote me on that. Uh, I actually haven't seen the actual design of the remote 
of the whole casing so I can't tell you guys how it is until I actually see it for myself somewhere or if there happen to be more pictures being put out there on the internet which I'm pretty sure there is at this point and I just didn't I don't think about checking it yet, but it'll be out there. So that's my thoughts about the Apple TV, and now let's talk about the iPhone 6S and the 6S Plus. So basically, the hardware-wise, exterior-wise, it's the same thing as the, the last two phones they've announced, except it's a faster version with a better camera with uh, a new Touch ID sensor. That That's pretty much all it is to it and now these devices can actually record in 4k video so used to be just 1080 up to 1080p and now you can record in 4k which is pretty awesome and as far as the quality wise I mean it, while Apple is showing that on the screen right there the only way you can tell is if you actually take the device and going to try it out for yourself and as far as like if it's worth getting the 6S and the 6S Plus, it depends what phone you're using. If you're on an Android phone or a non-Apple device and your contract is up and you're looking to switch to, uh, to uh, an iPhone, of course, uh, Apple will be selling the 5S, uh, the regular 6 uh, and the 6 Plus, and then they got the 6S uh, and the 6S Plus. Well, more than likely, I would suggest to you guys that you would go ahead and take a look at the iPhone 6S and the 6S Plus. Uh, I mean, yeah, you could get the older iPhones as well, but if you want something to last you uh, a little bit longer you know, with a faster speed uh, instead of having to uh, have a device that will eventually get slow very fast, definitely check out the 6S and the 6S Plus if you guys can uh, and take a look at those first. Now. If you're actually a current iPhone user already and looking to upgrade to a newer iPhone, I mean, it'll just depend. Obviously, if you're on the way older iPhones, yeah, you definitely need to upgrade, especially if your two-year contract was already up, but you just didn't bother with the upgrade yet. I mean, I don't know why you would do that, but hey, you know, from my understanding, it's like if it works for you, definitely stick with it. If it doesn't, get a new one. As far as like, if you're from an iPhone 5S, I would say uh, uh, from that phone and then the ones before it, you should definitely upgrade. If you're on an iPhone 6 and an iPhone 6 Plus, I mean, you do have the option unless if you need a better camera with a better Touch ID sensor. Uh, and if you really want the 4K video recording, I would suggest you hold off on the upgrade until the iPhone 7 comes out. Yeah, other than that, that's just how I feel about the upgrade uh, situations. Yeah, other than, okay, yeah, if you're from a, a non-Apple product and you want to switch to, to an Apple product, this is where I think you should go. Yeah, that, that's pretty much it. My thoughts about the iPhone 6S and the 6S Plus. I mean, uh, uh, while it, it got fancier and all, there wasn't really much to it, but that's what's expected. Expected, excuse me when you're looking at the S products because from the 5 to the 5S I mean it kept the same design but had Touch ID integrated into it with a faster processor uh, more power and that's the same thing going from the 6 to the 6S and then from the 6 Plus to the 6S Plus because the S stands for speed and then of course iOS 9 will be <laughs> coming out so will OS 10 El Capitan and then uh, Apple's way of trying to get Android users to iPhone very easily. That's pretty much my thoughts about uh, Apple's event. And boy, I feel like that was a mouthful after uh, uh, talking about this so long. Uh, I don't even know how long this video is right now, but uh, I, I did have a lot to say right there. So what do you guys think about these products that Apple has announced? Are you excited, not excited? you uh, still like Android better, you still like Microsoft better, Research in Motion, Blackberry, I mean, go ahead and leave your thoughts in the comments down below. And will I be getting any of these products just uh, so you guys uh, are wondering? Probably not. Although the Apple TV, the, it did look very nice. And, but at the same time, right now, I'm not 
America in a situation where I need to have new products right now. So I'm actually all set with what I've got here. I mean, I've got a, a working phone that I need on a daily basis. And I do have uh, an iPhone, my computer, uh, my TV, of course. So I'm pretty much all set right now. And I don't see myself getting uh, any of these products anytime soon or maybe never. I don't know. Uh, I mean, we'll see what happens. But more than likely, I might not get it. But for those of you guys that are uh, looking forward to these products, I mean, congratulations. And hopefully you guys will be satisfied with them when they come out. So that's it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.